Hey, AP Physics C, this is Horner, and this is the 2003 AP Physics C mechanic question number one. Uh, you have a 100 kilogram box that is being pulled along the x axis by a student. The box slides across a rough surface, so there's got to be some friction here. Uh, we'll deal with that the very last part of the problem. In its position, x varies with the time according to the equation that you see here, where x is in meters and t is in seconds. They want us first to determine the speed of the box at time t is equal to zero. So let's look at this equation first. We have x is equal to 0 0.5 times t cubed plus 2t. And we know that uh, velocity is really just the derivative of the position versus time. And so we need to do the derivative of this equation. Uh, remember the derivative uh, just by the power rule here. We're going to say x to the n you're going to take the n and subtract 1, and then you're going to multiply whatever is in front. So if you have a constant, you're going to multiply it times n. So let's do that for this one. So 0 0.5 times 3 is going to give us 1.5. And then t to the 3 minus 1 is going to give us 2. Uh, plus, and then this is t to the 1, so 1 times 2 is 2. And 1 minus 1 is 0, and 2 to the 0 would just be 1. So that is the uh, equation so far. But they want to know what is the velocity or the speed at t equals 0. So v is equal to uh, 1.5 times 0 squared plus 2. So this is 0, and we get v is equal to 2 meters per second. The next part of the problem, they want us to find the kinetic energy of the box at uh, as the function of time t as so i'm not sure why they put functions but hey, it's the first typo i've seen uh, k is equal to one half m v squared and we can't use v here so instead we've got to plug in the values that they've given us so k is equal to one half uh, and then we have the mass which is um, 100 and then v if you remember V is this equation right here, so we need to plug it in, and it's going to be 1.5, uh, and then it is t squared plus 2, and that whole quantity squared. One half of 100 would be 50, so we have 50 times 1.5 t squared plus 2 squared, and that is our solution for the kinetic energy of the box. For part two, so part uh, letter B, part double I. The next thing we have to do is find the net force acting on the box. And to find the net force, we're going to use our good friend, uh, Mr. Uh, Newton, and his second law. And you remember that the net force is equal to mass times acceleration. Uh, problem is, is we don't know what the acceleration is, but we do know that acceleration is equal to dv over dt. If you remember from before, uh, velocity is equal to 1.5 t squared plus 2. So we're going to just do the derivative of this uh, and uh, dv dt. So we're going to take 1 and a half times 2. That gives us 3. 2 minus 1 gives us 1, so that's just 3t. And then the 2 we don't worry about because there's no t there. So really, it'd be t to the 0. And uh, so this, this term just goes away uh, because now we're going to get uh, something totally different. And trust me, we're just going to do that. So now we have 3t here. Uh, force is equal to m. Uh, if you remember, the mass here is 100. And then we're going to multiply that times 3t. So that would be f equals m times a. And so that would be 300t. So now we have 300t. Uh, all right, so let's go on to the next part. The next part wants us to uh, find the power being delivered to the box. Uh, power, there's a couple different ways to do this one. You can do uh, one way um, or the other, doesn't matter. We're just going to do it one way because I think this is the easier way to do it. Power is work over time, but it's also the force times velocity. So this is going to be the easier way to do it. Uh, this is equal to the force. We just said the force is 300t. And then the velocity, if you remember, for the function t is 1.5t squared plus 2. And now we go ahead and multiply through. So we're going to get 450t cubed plus 600t. 
and that's worth two points. So you get one point for having the equation, one point for having the equation filled in with the right expression down on the bottom. And there's nothing more you need to do with it. So we're going to leave that one the way it is. Uh, for letter C, it, uh, it wants us to go ahead and calculate the net work done on the box in an interval of zero to two seconds. Uh, this one you can either do an integral uh, where you say work is equal to power times uh, time, or you can do it the way that I'm about to do it, and that's just use what we've been doing so far. So here we've got work is equal to the change in the kinetic energy. Uh, if we remember, uh, we've got to look at the kinetic energy. So at time zero, we had a speed, and at time two, we need to figure out what is this new speed. If, remember at time zero, we said that the velocity was equal to 1.5 t squared plus two. So at zero, velocity at zero, remember, was uh, not zero. Our velocity at zero was two. So here, the velocity at zero is two. And because we want to find the change in kinetic energy, it's one half of m, and then it's v final minus the v original. So our final velocity here is going to be 1.5 times four plus two. Uh, and uh, so we should get, oops, yeah, 1.5 times uh, four plus two, and that should be equal to eight meters per second. So now we have two speeds that we can plug in. Uh, we've got our final velocity and our original velocity, so this is going to be one half of 100 times our final velocity, which is eight uh, squared, because this whole thing is squared, minus, and then we have two squared. And if you go ahead and do that math, you should get 3,000 joules of work is done. Because remember, work is just changing kinetic energy, and that's what we solve for. The very last one says uh, indicate whether the work done by the student on the box uh, by the student at the interval zero to two seconds would be greater than, less than, or equal to uh, the answer in Part C. So for Part C, we, we're not really worried about the. Um, we didn't think about uh, the non-conservative force of friction. So here we're actually going to say that that student's going to have to do more work. And he's going to do, or she's going to do more work because uh, the work of the student is really equal to the change in kinetic energy plus the work done due to friction. So uh, you've got to overcome that friction, that non-conservative force, and that's where this comes in. Uh, so we said that friction would be in the very end of the problem, and there it is, and that is the end of this problem.